All right, so this is going to be uh, building on top of our discussion about what torque is. So it's torque and equilibrium. So uh, equilibrium up until this point has been to do with forces. We said in equilibrium, all of our forces were equal to zero. So the sum of all of our forces was equal to zero. So it wasn't accelerating. So here, when we deal with torque, torque can do a couple of different things. If we have an object here that's allowed to rotate in the center, so this is our axis of rotation, we could have a torque that tries to spin it counterclockwise, we could have a, a torque that tries to spin it clockwise. So for something to be in equilibrium, and we call this rotational equilibrium instead of linear equilibrium, we have to say that all of our torques equal zero. Okay. Now how can that happen? Well, if we have a torque that tries to pull it uh, counterclockwise, like this one over here on the left, we call that a positive torque. Anything that goes against that, so the one that's going clockwise, would be considered a negative torque. Kind of weird to say that counterclockwise is positive when the clock usually goes in the opposite way, but it actually comes from the whole convention that math uses that if you go off of the positive x-axis uh, to measure your angle, that's a positive direction. Anyway, all we really need to know is that counterclockwise is positive and clockwise is negative. Okay, so if we are dealing with summing of torques, then that means that we have to have multiple torques that are both going to be going in opposite directions. You can have a ton of different torques. We're really only going to look at scenarios where we have two. So let's envision like a seesaw type thing. So here we have a level seesaw. There's our fulcrum in the middle. Okay, and we have one object here that is 70 kilograms. We have another object here that is also 70 kilograms. Okay, let's say that the distance between this object and the center is 1.5 meters. Okay, so the question is how far would this need to be? It might seem pretty evident that in order for this to balance, it needs to be also 1.5 meters. But if we're talking about this in terms of torque, we need to remember what the equation is for torque. So the torque is R perpendicular multiplied by F. Okay, R perpendicular just means it's the perpendicular component of the distance in between the force and the uh, axis of rotation. So if we're talking about a force here, we're really talking about the force of gravity for that 70 kilogram object. And I'm just going to take seven or uh, g to be 10 here, so we can say our force is about 700 newtons. And that means we have another force over here that is also 700 newtons. So what is this r perpendicular? What is that perpendicular distance in between r, excuse me, in between the axis of rotation and the force? Well, that right there is a distance that is perpendicular to our force, so that means our r value is 1.5. So here it is 1.5 meters multiplied by 70 kilograms, which if you put that in the calculator, and hopefully I did my mental math right, it is 1,050. So what's the unit for torque? The torque unit is a newton times a meter or a newton meter. Okay. So originally I asked the question of how far out would this uh, second object need to be if it's 70 kilograms. So what we need is a torque that matches the other one that is 1050. Well, the only way to do that if it is 70 kilograms in mass the only way for it to also equal 1050 is to make sure that it is at 1.5 meters away. Okay, So that means our secondary torque, our torque clockwise, because this would be our counterclockwise, but our torque that is clockwise would be this one. So we can say that this is our positive and this is our negative. That means the sum of our torques together would equal zero. Okay, Let's take a look at a scenario where it is not the case uh, that they are the same mass. So here we go, same seesaw, same fulcrum in the middle, okay? So over here we have an object that is 20 kilograms, okay? Question is, can it be balanced by something that is 50 kilograms? Where can we put this on our seesaw in order for it to balance? Okay, so you might remember playing on seesaws uh, when you were a kid, can a heavy person be balanced by a lighter person? Where would the heavy person need to be? So let's get a, a, a measurement in here. Let's say that this is two meters away. So first off, let's take a look at the torque that this guy is creating. 
So we have a force here that is roughly 200 newtons, so that's the force of gravity, so 20 kilograms multiplied by 10 meters per second squared for little g. So we have a force here of 200 newtons. What is our torque? Okay, let me do that in the other color. Okay, what is our torque? And this would be a counterclockwise torque. So it would be R perpendicular multiplied by F. And what is our R perpendicular? Well, there is the perpendicular distance in between the axis of rotation and our force, so that means it has to be 2 meters. So we have 2 meters multiplied by 200 newtons, which gives us a torque of 400 newton meters. So that means we need our clockwise torque to also equal 400 newton meters. Okay, technically it'd be negative, right, because it's a clockwise torque. So that's what we need. Well, we know it's going to produce, wherever we put this box, okay, it's going to produce a force that is 500 newtons. Why 500? Because we have 50 kilograms multiplied by 10 meters per second squared. Again, that's gravity. So we have a 500 sitting right here, and we need to know what this R value is. So here, we'll actually solve for R and R would be 400 divided by 500, or basically 0.8 meters. So where would this uh, more massive object need to be? Well, it needs to be closer to the axis of rotation in order for this thing to balance out. So a lighter object can balance a heavier object, but they are not going to be at the same distance away from our axis of rotation, which happens to be in the center. Okay, one last thing. I want you to take a pen or a pencil or something that is uh, long and somewhat massive, and I want you to try to hold it at one end with just two fingers, and if you don't hold it too tightly, you might be able to let it slip through your fingers. At least one end will swing down towards the other side. Now, what I'm talking about here is if you have this pen and you are holding it right here, what happens? If you let go of it and allow it to swing, this end tends to swing down like that. Well, the only reason why that would happen is because we have forced our axis of rotation to be here where your fingers are, and there has to be some torque on this object making it swing down. Okay, so what would that torque be, and where would it be located, right? Because we have to know where it's located uh, for this to, to work. So it turns out that all objects have something known as a center of mass, and I'm sure this will be brought up in class. Center of mass. Basically, this is the point on an object where all the mass seems to be concentrated. We can also consider it to be the point where the force of gravity is actually acting. For a uniform object, and we're talking about an object that is similar on all sides, so say like a, a meter stick or even a pen or a pencil can be to, to some extent, that center of mass is right in the middle. So here's our center of mass. And it turns out that the torque acts right here at the center of mass. So if you have this object, like a pen or a pencil, and you have the axis of rotation close to one end, you end up having a torque from just the, for the fact that gravity is acting on the pin. It acts at the center of mass. So if we have an object that has a torque on it from the center of mass, trying to pull it clockwise, then that means there has to be a much greater force over here, or torque, so it would have to be the same torque, but a much greater force here that is trying to pull it counterclockwise, and I have that arrow drawn completely wrong. Here we go. Much greater force uh, that is making it go, or trying to make it go counterclockwise to balance it out. So your axis of rotation is a place that you can decide where it is. Not everything has to balance, uh, rotate around the center. In fact, think of a door. When you open a door, the axis of rotation is where the hinge is, not in the middle of the door. But think about where the door uh, handle is. It gets put as far to the outside as possible in order to make the R value in our torque equation as big as possible. So the axis of rotation can be picked wherever you want, but 
the reason why we didn't have to worry about gravity in these equations is because take a look at what the R value would be for your gravity center of mass torque. It's right there in the middle and the R value is zero. So I'm bringing a couple of things up that we will talk more in class about with this equilibrium and center of mass and I just wanted to bring it up a little bit here that gravity can act as a torque and it all depends on where your axis of rotation is. If your axis of rotation is at the center of mass, then we don't worry about it. But if it's off, like it is here, then we have to worry about gravity as an additional torque on our system. All right. I'll ask you a few questions in the uh, uh, form below.